Mom, how come the honey goes straight down? Why doesn't the honey mix up as it goes down? Honey goes straight down because honey is denser than the water. Denser than the water? Wait, I'll show you. Let me get few things from the kitchen. What do we need? We will need glass, honey which is already here, cooking oil and water. First we will pour honey. Now add the oil into this glass. We will add water to the jar slowly. Look carefully UV. It is all mixing up. No, watch carefully. Wow! Look mom, all the three are separated. Yes, the liquids do not mix but floats as separate layers. The oil floats on honey and the water sinks below oil but floats over honey. But how mom? The three liquids have different densities. Oil with the least density floats on water. Honey settles at the bottom as it has the greatest density. This was fun mom! Mom, look at this glass. UV, why did you fill the glass so full? Sorry mom, but the water was warm, so I dropped an ice cube too. It will overflow as the cube melts. That's okay. Now stay still. Do not touch the glass or the table. Wait till the ice cube melts. Mom, if it melts, then it will overflow, right? UV, just wait and watch. Look mom, the ice cube has melted completely and the water didn't spill too. How is it mom? That's because even though the ice cube melted, the water doesn't overflow. When water freezes to make ice, it expands and takes up more space than it does as liquid water. The water from the ice takes up less space than the ice itself. When the ice cube melts, the level of the water stays about the same. That is the reason we should never keep glass bottles in the freezer. When the liquid in the bottle expands to freeze, it breaks the bottle. Can I drink the water now? Yes, yeah, sure. Just be careful that you don't spill the water. One litre of hot water weighs less than one litre of cold water. Almost all liquids become heavier when they become colder. This is because the colder the water, the denser it is. Uh, how can it be? How will I know that cold water is really heavier than warm water? Shall I weigh them and see? No, I don't have scales for that. Let me ask Chotu. Hmm, Izzy Fizzy Flip Flop call Chotu on the spot. Master UV, here is Chotu at your service. Hi Chotu, you know I was reading this book. It says one litre of hot water weighs less than one litre of cold water. Almost all liquids become heavier when they become colder. This is because the colder the water, the denser it is. Yes, that's true. Do you have any doubt about it? No, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I want to test this. Can you help me please? Mm, okay, sure UV. This is very simple. I shall show you a small experiment and you will know cold water is heavier. Tell me what all do you need? We'll need cold water, warm water, food colouring, piece of square cardboard and two soft drink bottles. We have to perform this experiment over the sink so that we don't spill water everywhere. Ok, what do we do next? How do we do this experiment? Take two bottles. 
I will fill this bottle right up to the top with cold water and mark it 1. Next, fill the bottle right up to the top with warm water and also add some drops of food coloring. Mark it as 2. Now, we will place the square cardboard over the top of bottle 2 and keeping it in place with one hand, turn bottle 2 upside down, putting it exactly on top of bottle 1. Now carefully remove the card. Then, keeping the bottle necks tightly together, turn both bottles the other way up and vroom! That was very fast. It was amazing. The color water has come up into the bottle 1. The reason you have created a volcano is because the cold water is heavier. So it sinks, pushing the warm water up. Yes, I know that warm water is lighter than the cold water. Thank you, Chotu. Andy, can you pick this ice cube without touching it? How is it possible? <laughs> Don't you know? It's very easy. I'll show you. Really? How? Let me get a few things handy before we start. Salt, glass of water, string and ice cube. What do we do next? Place this ice cube in the glass. Now dangle the end of the string on the ice cube. Keeping the string still, let me sprinkle some salt on the ice cube and leave it for a few minutes. See what happens now. Lift the string and watch. Wow! This is spectacular! Do you know the reason, Andy? No, I don't know. Salt makes ice melt. Sprinkling some salt on the ice cube makes a little puddle of melted ice. While you wait, the ice cube refreezes the puddle around the string. Now, ice surrounds the string, so the ice cube sticks to it when you lift up the string. This was fun! Let me try this one. What is the matter, Yuvi? Why are you sad? I picked up these flowers to give mom. It's her birthday. Wow! Party time! But why are you sad? Mom likes red color, but I have white flowers. That's it? I can change its color to red. But how? We need some material to start. We need three white flowers with stem, three long glasses with water filled three-fourth and food color. Cut the stem at the end of the flower. We will add red color in first glass, yellow in the second glass. Let this third glass have normal water. Place one flower in first glass, another in the second glass. Take one more flower and slit the stem into two. Keep one portion in the red water glass and the other portion of the stem in the normal water glass. What will happen now? We will leave this overnight and see it in the morning. Let's go to bed then. Good night, Chotu. Good night, Yuvi. Wow, a red flower. Chotu, see this. Didn't I tell you will have a red flower in the morning? Yes, I have a red, yellow and look at this. It's red and white. Flowers drink water starting from their lowest extremity. The water slowly travels upward through tiny pipes in the stem. Your water was colourful. And now you have multicoloured flowers. The principle is the same for all types of plants. Trees get water from the ground through their roots. The water travels up to the highest leaves. Thanks Chodu. I'll go and wish mom.
छोटू वी ब्रीद इन ऑक्सीजन एंड ब्रीद आउट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड राइट यस यू आर राइट हाउ कैन यू टेल वी ब्रीद आउट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ओनली सो डू यू वांट प्रूफ नॉट एग्जैक्टली बट आई वांट टू नो इफ व्हाट वी ब्रीद आउट इज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ओके नो प्रॉब्लम वी शैल परफॉर्म अ स्मॉल एक्सपेरिमेंट and you will be convinced that the air you breathe out is carbon dioxide you may need some materials right tell me what all you will need we need lime water drinking straw a glass and eye dropper okay we have all the materials here first we have to pour lime water into the glass now dip the eye dropper in the glass and release air by pressing it What do you see UV? Bubbles. Bubbles are formed in the glass and the water is clear. Now put the straw in the glass and blow air through mouth into the straw. What do you see UV? Bubbles again. Bubbles are formed and the water gets cloudy. See closely. Oh yes, the water looks cloudy. Why is that? The lime water becomes cloudy when it comes in contact with carbon dioxide. This shows we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Are you convinced now that you breathe out carbon dioxide? Yes, yes. Thanks, Chotu. Mom, telephone is such a nice thing. You can speak to dad any time. Yes, that's true. Do you know who invented telephone? Mm, no, mom. Who invented it? It was Alexander Graham Bell who invented this telephone. Let me call Chotu and tell this. Izzy fizzy flip flop call Chotu on the spot. Master UV I know Alexander Graham Bell invented telephone. You're very smart, Chotu. UV, do you want your own telephone? My own telephone? Yes. How can I get it? We will make it. For that you will need few things, right? Yes. We will need string, two pieces of tracing paper, sticky tape, sharp pencil, two rubber bands two paper clips and two cardboard tubes what do we do next we will take the cardboard tube spread the tracing sheet over the tube's opening on one end pull the paper tight and fix it with a rubber band and sticky tape repeat the process on the other tube Make a small hole in the center of the paper using a sharp pencil. Now run the string from one open end on the tube through the hole in the paper. Pin the ends of the thread with paper clips to stop the string sliding out. Your personal messenger is ready. Use the tubes as a telephone and talk to a friend. Make sure you keep the string tight. How does it work? Sound waves from the mouth make the paper and string at the end vibrate. The vibrations travel along the tight string. The string makes the paper vibrate and this reproduces the sound of the caller's voice. Hello? Hello? Wow, I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Why is this plant always bent towards the window? Because plants need sunlight to grow. How do you know? Okay, we'll do an experiment to prove this. Okay, what do we need to perform the experiment? We will need two pieces of card, jug of water, scissors, small potted plant which should fit into the box and a shoe box. Shall we start? We will cut a large window in one end of the box. 
Cut a window in each card and keep it aside. Put the pot in the cardboard box and fix the cardboard piece slightly above it. Cover the box and keep in well lit place for few days. Water the plant every day. After some days, you will notice that the plant has grown out of the opening of the cardboard piece. Now, fix the second piece of cardboard slightly above the previous card. Water every day and keep observing. Now, you will see the plant will grow out of the box. Open the box and see the plant. How did this happen? The plant bends in order to get through all the windows and reach the light. This shows that sun is very essential for plants to grow. Yuvi, why are you overwatering the plants? I thought I will pour more water so that I don't have to water tomorrow. No, Yuvi, that is wrong. Plant will die if you water in excess. How? Come, I'll show you. First, we'll put a few things together before we begin. Paper towels, jug of water, boot color, bowl of water, three deep saucers and bean seeds which is soaked overnight. What do we have to do, Mom? Fold the paper towel and place a towel in each saucer. Now add few drops of food color to the jug of water and mix well. Pour little water into the first saucer to moisten the towel. Now place a few beans on each paper towel. Pour enough water into the second saucer to cover the beans. Do not add any water to the third saucer. Now we will keep the saucers in a warm place for a few days. But add little water every day to the first saucer just to keep the towel moist. Mom, can we see what happened to those seeds? Sure, look at them. Mom, look here. Only the seeds in the first saucer have grown completely. Yes, that's correct. But why? The beans in the third saucer dried without water. The beans in the second saucer began to grow. But the water stops air getting into them and they stop growing. Only the beans in the first saucer begin to grow properly. Because they get water from the moist paper, oxygen from air and they are warm. Oh! Now I know, we should water the plants just as much as they need, neither more nor less. How do we see? How do our eyes actually work? Huh? One more question. Well, our eyes... Uh, wait! I'll explain it with an experiment. You know so many experiments. Where did you learn them from? Well, I learnt it from Kids Science CD. So what do we need to begin? A card, sticky tape, magnifying glass, moldable clay, scissors, tissue paper, torch and fish bowl. What do we do next? First, tape the tissue to the side of the bowl. Fix the magnifying glass in front of the bowl with moldable clay like this. Fold the card and make a cut out, something like this. Fix the card in front of the magnifying glass using moldable clay. Hold the torch on the figure. An upside down image of it appears on the tissue. Move the magnifying glass back or forth to make the image sharp. This is an inverted image. The tissue is like the retina at the back of each eye. The round ball is like your eyeball. The torch lights up the figure in front of the model eye. The lens bends the light rays from the figure to form an image. The image forms on the retina which sends signals to the brain so that you see the figure. Isn't this a bit complex?
Look here, UV. I have a secret message in this. Secret message? But this is blank. There is hidden message in this. Let me show you. Look carefully. I can't see anything. See, see. Can you see now? Yes. It's Andy is smart. How is it? Isn't it great? How did you do that? Show me too, please. Sorry, UV. It's a secret code. I can't show you this. Well, uh, I have to go home. Bye. How is it possible? How can a blank paper suddenly show a message? Chotu. Yes, Chotu. Easy, busy, flip, flop, call Chotu on the spot. Yes, Master UV. You know, Chotu, Andy had a blank paper. I saw it myself. Later, he held it up for some time, and a message appeared on it. And he tells it's a secret and can't share it with me. So, in short, you want to know how the message appeared on that blank paper? Yes, yes, you're right. How? How can it appear? Master UV, I'll tell you. But we'll have to do a small experiment for that. Do whatever, but show me how the message appears on the blank paper. We need half a lemon, water, spoon, bowl, cotton bud, white paper, and lamp. Or other light bulb. We got all we need. What do we do next? Let me squeeze some lemon juice into the bowl and add a few drops of water. Now mix the water and lemon juice with the spoon. Dip the cotton bud into the mixture slowly and write a message onto the white paper. What did you write? Can you wait for some time? This juice has to dry and become completely invisible. See, the paper is completely dried. Let me hold it close to this light bulb to heat the paper. I can see it. I can see it. It's magic. <laughs> so, secret agent UV, how is it? But how did the paper turn brown? Lemon juice is an organic substance that oxidizes and turns brown when heated. Diluting the lemon juice in water makes it very hard to notice when you apply it to the paper. No one will be aware of its presence until it is heated and the secret message is revealed. Other substances which work in the same way includes orange juice, honey, milk, onion juice and vinegar. This was fun. Let's do one more. I'll show it to dad and mom. Wow! This is amazing! This insect is walking on the water. Why didn't the insect drown in water? How can it walk over water? Let me take Chotu's help. Easy, fizzy, flip, flop. Call Chotu on the spot. Master Yuvi, here I am. What can I do for you? Chotu, can you see this? See, the insect is walking on the water. How is it possible? This is possible because of the surface tension of the water. Surface tension? What is that? Ha! Ah, time for an experiment. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, Chotu. Let us get a few things before we start. We will need a tub, piece of card, scissors, liquid soap, and water. We have all the materials. Shall we begin? Yes. We have to fill the tub with water. Now take the cardboard and cut a small triangle. You can see that the water is still. Place the cardboard triangle in the corner of the tub. The triangle does not move. Now add liquid soap on your fingertip and touch the water in the tub just behind the triangle. Can you see the cardboard move towards the center of the tub? What happened? How did it go to the center of the tub? The boat remained still at the corner of the tub as the surface tension was pulling it in all directions. The soap loosens the surface tension behind the boat and it is pulled to the front into the area where a surface tension is still strong. 
the surface of water has a sort of skin which is strong enough for tiny insects to walk on. This skin is called surface tension. It is the surface tension that holds water together in drops. Now I know why the insect can walk on water. It is because of the surface tension.